Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we take a look at an old beast of a card, the Radeon R9-390X. Representing AMD as the 300 series flagship, this card was set to go head-to-head -head against Nvidia's GTX 980, but armed with double the VRAM and a lower price. Interestingly, this GPU shared very similar spec with its older brother, the R9-290X. In fact, both cards were manufactured using the 28 nanometer process, had 2016 shading units, same amount of rasterization units, even the memory bus was 512 bit wide on both of them. So, it's the same card then, right? Well, where the 390X promised improvements was a lower TDP, double the amount of faster clocked VRAM, and a refined, slightly higher clocked GPU core. More noticeable was the somewhat aggressive pricing of the 390X. At 429 USD, it was 27% cheaper than the GTX 980 or, in fact, the R9-290X at a release. The card I'm testing today is Subfire's Tri-X model, which I purchased nearly one year ago for £79 or about $100. That seems to be about the usual going rate on eBay at the moment, however, the X variant is considerably harder to come by. As the name suggests, the Tri-X features three 90mm fans and even though its shroud is made out of plastic, the card feels solid in hand. Despite the lower 275 watt TDP, it still requires two 8-pin power connectors. Card features double BIOS and this small button will lit up blue when the non-UEFI BIOS is in use. I wish it was the other way around. In terms of display output, card offers three display ports, an HDMI and a DVI port. The Tri-X doesn't come with a backplate, I believe those only came with the higher tier, the Nitro series of cards. Popping card on a scale measured 1039 grams or about 2.9 pounds. Right, let's grab a screwdriver and take it apart next. There are 16 screws at the back of the car to remove plus additional three at the I.O. shield. Attempts to separate the cooler reminded me of the struggles I had with the 290X a couple of months ago, but eventually it snapped. One needs to be really careful as the fan header cable is really short. I've yet to see a disappointing cooler made by Sapphire, and this ain't one. Black thermal pads are back and look at the copper core and those fat heat pipes. The cooler itself weighs 748 grams or about 1.64 pounds. The all black PCB looks very busy from both sides, but let's clean up the old thermal paste and move on to some testing. Starting with Time Spy, here the 390X delivers marginally better results than a year younger entry level GTX 1060 and around 10% better than a mid tier Polaris RX 570. Firestrike Extreme follows a nearly identical pattern and the 390X scored 6016 points. In Heaven Benchmark, with the usual settings dialed in, 390X delivered disappointingly low results matching RX 570's performance. GTX 1060 really showing off with almost a 30% point advantage. Yikes. On to the next graph, here I divide Heaven's score by the average GPU power consumption. No surprises here, the R9-390X barely hangs at the bottom of the graph with just 7.6 points for every watt it used. Oh man, there is no relief for the 390X. The MSRP to score ratio of 4.36 is very low and put it into the nope, not worth it category. Finally, when considering second hand value, the 390X actually scores well and with 17.5 points it ranks above the GTX 1060. Better move on to some game testing. The 390X was not happy to share its power usage with Afterburner and even after utilizing Hardware Info 64 for more stats, the closest I got was a VRM power in, which was still off by about 40 watts. 
Cyberpunk 2077 comes first. I've used the usual medium preset with FSR on quality which suits this GPU for a good balance between image quality and performance. The 390X pushed 53 FPS on average, with 1% low sitting at 40. This was of course very playable, but one really needs to use low settings for a solid 60 FPS. Compared to the GTX 1060, the 390X delivers 10% more FPS, but this is sadly at nearly twice the power consumption. Next up, Far Cry 5. Whilst experiencing the usual amount of chaos, the game ran perfectly fine and with ultra preset but no HD textures, ISO 72 FPS on average. Compared to GTX 1060, this time it beats the 390X by around 10%. 2020's Assassin's Creed Valhalla is still considered as a demanding game, but thanks to FSR, the 390X delivered a solid result of 66 FPS and 1% lows at 51. Nice. Up next, we kick it up a notch. Call of Duty Warzone brings quick action and naturally calls for as many FPS as possible. You know, it is the difference between winning a chicken dinner or going home with a doggy back. Um, sorry, I was just reading Warzone's minimum specs of Nvidia's website. Using a balanced preset, the 390X pushed 75 FPS average. Radeon enjoys 15% lead over the 1060. Ah, Battlefield 5. Well, first, please ignore the recorded footage. I got carried away and recorded using Ultra Preset. It's about a week later, I'm about to edit this video and I just realized this result does not match the high preset used with previously tested cards. Not to worry. Of course, I'll install the 390X back on the test bench and test again using the high preset. And forget to record. Wow. Yes, sometimes such is the life of a reviewer. With all of this, the 390X delivered 93 FPS on average with 1% low sitting at 74. That is a solid result, but only until you also consider the similarly priced siblings who are hair slower but significantly more efficient at it. Holy shit! Did I just summarize the R9 390X? Yeah, so do me a favor, don't google that word. Combat in Kingdom Come Deliverance is as demanding on the player as is the game itself on the hardware you play it on. The 390X did quite well and with very high settings, ISO 71 FPS on average, with decent 1% lows at nearly 55. Have you ever played this game? Let me know in the comments down below. Next game tested was Mafia Definitive Edition. The usual route from city to airport and using the lovely Schubert Frigate is something I always look forward to when testing GPUs. With the usual medium preset, 390X pushed 66 FPS on average. The RX 570 was slower by 17% at this title. Forza Horizon 4 was no problem for the 390X, even with the Ultra preset. With an average of 75 FPS and 1% lows at 61, one can really enjoy this game with this old beast of a GPU. Let's close game testing by playing some Spring Mayhem in Crossout. This free-to-play game is not one of the most demanding titles out there, but I still enjoy it so much. With maxed out settings, 390X pushed 112 FPS on average. So what's the verdict on this once flagship GPU? Let's start by what's good about it. The 8GB VRAM buffer is nice to have, especially if you plan on gaming at 1440p. Some say GPU runs out of steam before it exhausts the 8GB of VRAM, others say it helps. But really, that should not be a reason to purchase a second-hand GPU in 2023. Looking at the benchmark results, I felt if little bad, part of me really wanted the 390X to push harder. Last year has been very kind to gamers as GPU prices continue to drop, making Pascal Polaris and even RDNA cards 
that much more affordable. Had I reviewed this car two years ago, I'm sure I would have a lot more positive to say about it. Unfortunately, the high power consumption and legacy driver status rule out any possibility of me recommending this card in today's world. With that, I want to hear from you. Do you still use this card in your gaming PC or did you ever own one? Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed it and please consider subscribing to my channel. I hope to see you all in the next one.